Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Hello, Shalom Aleichem. Welcome back. Today's Daf is Gitin Peidalet. We are on the second line from the top. Tanur Rabbonan, we have learned in a brisa as follows. A fellow gives a get to his wife with a stipulation almanas, on condition. So the divorce takes effect on condition. Only if you decide to marry this and this fellow, let's call him Ruvain. So the divorce is conditional upon her marrying Ruvain after divorce, Harezu Loitinose, she should not go and marry Ruvain, the Imnosis Loitetsi, but if she does marry him, then she need not leave him. Now, Micah Omar, what exactly does the Bryson mean to say? When it says Harezu Loitinose, don't marry, don't marry Ruvain, or don't marry somebody else, what exactly are we speaking about? Omar of Nachman. Hachik Omar, the Bryson means like this. Harezu Loitinose Loi. When this fellow stipulates this type of condition, right? You're only divorced on condition you go ahead and marry Reuven. She should not proceed with marrying Reuven. Why? It doesn't look proper. Shema Yomir people, you know, shouldn't start saying, Look, people are giving away their wives. It's inappropriate. So she should not go ahead and marry Reuven. But, uh, you know, on the one hand, she shouldn't marry Ruvain, but on the other hand, she really shouldn't be marrying anybody else because, remember, she has to keep her end of the deal. Her get is conditional upon this condition that we are discouraging her from keeping. So she can't really marry anybody else either. But, but if she actually went and married somebody else, let's call him Shimon, she need not, she need not leave him. Asks the Gemara, what do you mean? She didn't keep her deal. She did not fulfill the condition. True, we're advising her against marrying Reuben. It's inappropriate, but after all, that's the condition that the husband set forth. So how can she go ahead and ignore that and marry somebody else? Because of this concern of inappropriateness, we don't require her to leave Shimon Vesharin and Eshesh Ishla Alma. And we're basically allowing a married woman whose divorce was canceled because of lack of uh, fulfilling her condition. We're allowing her marrying marry a, 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 just a person that's, that's us. Or she can't marry a person if she's a, a married woman. Ella Omar of Nachman Hachikam. The Bryce means like this. She should not go ahead and marry Reuven. For this reason, Shema Yomru, Nesheim, Noisten, Matana, the reason we mentioned before, is inappropriate. It looks like they're giving away their wives. But if she went and married Reuven, the subject of that tonight, she shouldn't have, but if she does, she stays with him. This concern of inappropriateness, it's not enough a reason to separate her. And that's what the Bryson meant to say. So, of course, she really is not divorced unless that condition is kept. But we have a problem with keeping this condition. We don't advise it. We discourage it. But if it was done, it's done. Amalei Rava. So Rava responds to Rav Nachman. It seems like the only issue is with her marrying Reuven, lest it appear like there is a gift of, of wives. Loi hu right? Hala achat But apparently there's no issue with her marrying... The Bryce doesn't seem to be concerned about her marrying somebody else. According to... This interpretation of the Brysa, don't marry Reuven. But but the Yavid, you did, okay, stay with him. But apparently there's no issue marrying somebody else. Hala achatin, i because she, she can marry somebody else, no problem. What do you mean? That's even worse. Because she's not fulfilling her condition. She's a married woman. What about keeping that deal? Keeping the condition? Vichitema, perhaps you'll say. No problem, she'll do it, you know, later on in life. She'll get to it. You know, today she's married to Shimon. You know, after a while she'll divorce him. And go back to Reuven, the subject of her condition, of her tenaya, of her stipulation. She'll marry Reuven. And, you know, we're not concerned that perhaps this won't actually develop, this won't actually pan out. She'll make sure to do it. 
Ulahachta pligas alayd Rav Yehuda. Adam Aslayim, we're just comparing it, uh, you mean to compare it to the uh, opinion that disputes Rav Yehuda? The opinion that's not concerned about, you know, the, the chance of her perhaps not actually, you know, carrying out that condition. Yeah, she'll do it. She'll make sure to um, somehow accommodate the uh, Tanai. Uh, you know, now she's married to Shimon. After a while, she'll let him go and go marry to, marry, marry Reuben. We're not concerned that she won't do it. The Itmar, as we learned in a Gemara in a Durham. Koinam enai b'shino hayyayim. Look, I may not sleep today. Im ishan l'machar if I sleep tomorrow. So if I sleep Monday, I can't sleep Sunday. Amar vidah al yishan hayyayim. Be careful, don't don't sleep Sunday. Shami ishan l'machar, perhaps I'll fall asleep tomorrow. And if he sleeps today and tomorrow, then he's in trouble because... If he sleeps Monday, Sunday's sleep was forbidden. So don't take chances. Rav Nachman Amr, don't worry about it. Yishan Hayyayim, Gzun to hate. Go to sleep today. We're not concerned that he will fall asleep tomorrow. He'll make sure to keep himself awake and fulfill that condition. Here as well with the Isha, go ahead and marry Shimon. Ultimately, he'll make sure to go back and marry Ruvain and keep your tonight. How could you compare the two cases? How somebody day kaima? In the case of uh, the nether of sleep, uh, he's in control. The boy, if, if he wants, Mavr is not shaken, you know, poke himself, prick himself, but Silviasa using uh, thorns, Veloinoim, to prevent him from, himself from falling asleep. So basically, he can control that. So go ahead, sleep today, and make sure not to sleep tomorrow, no problem. Hacha bedido kaima legrushe, but over here by the Isha, is it in her hands? She's in control? She can force a divorce? It's the man's domain. So who says she'll ever get to marry Reuven? So how can you take that chance by allowing her to marry Shimon before she addressed her Tanai? Elama Rava, rather, Rava says the correct interpretation of the Bryce is as follows. We're speaking about a man, Megarish's wife, on condition that you marry Reuven, says the Bryce, This woman is stuck. She may not marry Reuven, nor anybody else. Why? Loi, loi tinasi, she shouldn't marry Ruvain because of that concern of inappropriateness. Shama yoim, less people will say, Nishoy Sayim, nice and matana, they're giving away their wives. So that's out. Laach letinasi, nor can she marry anybody else. The boyle cumulit no, because after all, this was the condition. As unreasonable as it is, but what can we do? The get is dependent upon fulfillment of this condition and. Uh, we t- can't take a chance. You can't marry anybody else unless that condition is filled. But, says the Bryce, if she chose to marry Ruben, she need not separate. She doesn't have to let him go. Because of this uh, that's not enough of a reason. You know, the uh, concern of Shema Yemru, inappropriateness, that's not enough a reason to separate them, but la'acher, if she marries somebody else, Shimon, before being Mekayim, the Tanai of marrying Ruvain, then we're in trouble. Tate says she must leave him because there's a risk involved that she may not ever get to marry Ruvain, in which case her divorce never took effect. The boy because she has to fulfill her condition. Tanaka was the Rava. In fact, we have a b'risa which supports Rava's approach to this halacha. In this case, we say, She shouldn't be marrying Rubain, nor Shimon, nor Levi. If she chose to marry Rubain, but the Eved, we say, But if she chose to marry somebody else, then she must leave. Here we have several, several, several similar tenoim which are almost just as unreasonable as the previous situation. Look, here's your get on condition. It's actually more unreasonable. Amanas should tell the Rukia that you uh, go up to the uh, Shemayim. Amanas should tell the Tahim. So in those days, going up to Shemayim was impossible. Today, perhaps it's different. Amanas should tell the Tahim, or on condition that you go down to the depths of the earth. Amanas should tivli kanesh adalt amos. This condition is that you have to swallow a four ama long rod. Amanas should tavili kanaben kuf ama. The get happens on condition that you find me a, a, st- a stick, a pole, a hundred amalong, a reed a hundred amalong. 
on condition that you walk over the uh, the Great Sea. Ain't I get? Eh, that's uh, it's not a practical. It's not a, a feasible tonight. And therefore, if it's undoable, then uh, you can't have a get. Rabbi Yudah ben Teira He says, look, for that very reason, because get, it's going to be a get, because his condition is basically dream stuff. It's uh, it's not going to happen. So the tenai never takes hold, never takes effect, and the get happens without the tenai. Klal Amar, Rabbi Deben Tema. In fact, he set forth a, a, a general formula called tenai shei em shaloy lekaim of a seifay. If you have a tenai which ultimately cannot be fulfilled, such as walking across the ocean, v'is nolav mitchilasay, and this is the tenai that the you know husband initially stipulates. Einoy elok mafliga b'dvarim bekasha. It's just considered you know. Bluster is just, you know, giving her a hard time, and the get uh, is kosher, independent of the lack of fulfillment of this tonight. So basically, the tonight is irrelevant. So if we just pay close attention to Rabbi Dovin Tema's wording, he has a lashon called Khlal Omar, which sounds like he's also trying to address other similar situations, and he has a, a lashon Kazeget. Not only this type of unreasonable condition is not reckoned with. I'm going to see soon. What else is trying to include and what else to exclude? Amarav Nachman, Amarav. In fact, that's how we paskin. Halacha, Rabbi and Temo. We disregard this unreasonable, unfulfillable condition. Amar Nachman Yitzchak, Masis Namadeka. We take a close look at the Mishnah in Bava Metziah. We find the same thing. The Tani we learned over there. Kol she'ev shaloy l'kame b'soifoy. A Tani which can... And that's what he stipulated initially to know Yikayim. That condition takes hold, takes effect, and is binding. Let's make a diuk. Let's infer from here. But if it's something that's not fulfillable, a tonight bottle, that tonight is not binding. In fact, this proves the shita of Rabbi Dabin Here comes another similar unreasonable condition. Look, here's the get on condition that you eat chazer meat, non kosher meat. Mahu. What happens here? Does the tsnai bind her or not? Is the get dependent upon fulfillment of the tsnai or not? Do we view spiritual inhibitions similar to physical inhibitions? Amar Abai, he, he. It's one and the same. Just like walking across the ocean is physically impossible, and therefore. It's non-binding. Eating something non-kosher is spiritual, spiritually unfeasible, and therefore it's non-binding. Rav Amarno, there's a difference. Efshad da'achla v'lakya. Walking across the ocean is impossible. Eating something non-kosher, although we don't do it, but, you know, ultimately, if she chooses to do so, she can. She'll get malchus, it's an avera, but you can't say it's an impossible proposition, and therefore... Uh, the get is dependent upon this condition. La abayi. Now, according to abayi, the lotion of klal, right? We had klal, amar uh, vidav entema, including another similar situation where we ignore the tenai la suya basa chazir. It's including this type of spiritual inhibition, which also is not reckoned with. Lurava, on the other hand, Rava looks at the word kaze. Rabbi vidav entema used the word kaze. This. Unreasonable, you know, walking across the sea condition is irrelevant, but something else similar is reckoned with, is binding. To exclude a case of Basa Chazir, which is just a spiritual, I mean, it's not just, but it's, after all, uh, as important as it is, but it's not the physical inhibition that's holding her back, it's that spiritual barrier that tonight, unfortunately, is binding. Hareza gite, here is your get, amana some condition, shetibali lepleni, that you get involved as married with uh, Ruvain. Whether uh, through marriage or otherwise. Niskayim atnai, hareza get, okay, if this tonight was fulfilled, she got involved with that fellow, it's a get. Vim love, otherwise ain't a get. Amana shaloi tibali la avich. But if he tells a look, this get works on condition that you don't get involved as married with your relative, father or your brother. Ain chayshish and shemad nivalulhen, she uh, can just go and use the get and marry out without a concern that she'll ever get involved with her family. It's impractical. It's not something we're concerned about. Okay? Now let's make a deal. Let's make an inference. V'ilu, but. 
why didn't the Brysa mention the following possibility? That the Tanai was, Almanaz, that you get involved as married with your relative. Which is an Avera. Like Tani, the Brysa doesn't mention that case. So La Abayi, who says that spiritual barriers are viewed like physical barriers, we understand why the Brysa didn't mention it. Because it's irrelevant. It doesn't hold water. Lerava, who says that spiritual is different than physical, then gosh, why didn't the Brysa mention that as a possible condition? Amalach Rava, Says Rebbe, one second. Big difference. Vishlam basa chazir. Although, uh, uh, eating non-kosher is considered a tonight, but after all, it's in her hands to do so. Efshad the achla balaki. She can proceed and have the non-kosher meat and get the malka, suffer the consequence. So it's in her hands to do so. Therefore, it's a binding condition. Plenty nami. Likewise, in the Bryce's case where he stipulated, you must get involved with that fellow, that stranger as married, Look, even if he's in, disinterested, she'll coerce him. She can pay him off to do so. So ultimately, it's within her ability to fulfill the tonight. But whereas a hypothetical tonight of uh, you must interact as married with your relative, that's not in her control. She has the ability to promote that. Okay, suppose she's interested in doing an isr with them. Who says they'll cooperate? Abba Ba'avich, her family, Mi Avdi Yisur, who says they're interested in cooperating and doing an Isser. So, of course, this cannot be considered a binding condition. Even I agree that this is different. So, bottom line, Lerava Kla La Suya Abba Ba'avich. So, remember, we have two phrases we have to accommodate. Ravid Ibn Misera said, Kazeget, stipulating the need to walk across the ocean. That's ignored, that's irrelevant. Kazeget, even without keeping that tonight. But something else similar is not ignored. It must be kept. It's binding. And then he has a lashon which is more inclusive. Kalal Omar we do and Tema, any type of situation which is unreasonable is ignored. It doesn't have to be kept as non binding. So we have an inclusionary term and an exclusionary term. So Abai and Rebel both apply it along their lines, along their tracks. So let's see the Gemara. Lerav, according to Rav's approach, the Lushan Kalal, which is inclusive, what else is it including? Not only something which is, which is physically unfeasible, Asui Abava Avich. This last case. You must go and get involved as married with your relative. Nah, it's, even if it's just an Isser, meaning it's, it's physically possible, but who says they're going to cooperate? It's not something which she can be obligated to do. On the other hand, the word Kazet, that are viewed dimension, only this, but something else. Although it's difficult and practically unfeasible, but since it's only spiritual unfeasible, only spiritually problematic, that is a binding tonight. Which is similar to walking across the sea, but it's it's a spiritual prohibition. Therefore, Rabbi says it is binding. On the other hand, the Abaye, Klal, the inclusionary term Klal, includes even a tanai, which opposes, which involves an iser, and that is binding, and kazeh, the, the word kazeh, which indicated that only this unreasonable, unreasonable, ridiculous tanai of needing to walk across the sea is not reckoned with, but something similar is, lamute plainly, as opposed to go ahead and get involved with this uh, other person here as married, and that is binding, because after all, like I explained, it's in her hands to do so, she could. Uh, she's desperate, she can go and coerce him, pay him off. Continues the Gemara with a kasha from a Bryce. Meisvi. Harezekitich almanaz shetoich libasar chazir. Here's the gate on condition you have chazir. Vimo isa zara. Or another example, if she was a non kayhenes Almanaz shetoich libitruma. On condition you eat truma, which is asr to a Yisrael. Vimo isa nazira. If she was a nazira, who accepted upon herself a vow, refrain from wine. So he said, here's your get on condition you drink wine. I'm not yain. In all three cases, in the sky, I'm at you raise a get. If love, in a get. She fulfills, if she keeps, it's a get. Otherwise not. Now, the Rava, it's perfect. Nicha, it works very well. Despite the fact that these experiences involve Averis. But La Baye, who says, when there's a spiritual barrier, that Tanai need not be kept. Kasha. Why does the price indicate otherwise? Amalach Abayi. Abayi responds, well, remember, there was a Machlegas Tamnoim. I was explaining Rabbi the Ben Tema's approach, who says, impractical, unfeasible, is not reckoned with. But the Rabbanon disagreed. 
Amalech Abayi, me savers. Do you really think Divrei HaKoyli, that this price reflects all opinions? Hamani Rabbanani. This price is the Rabbanan. Who hold that any condition that he stipulates has to be kept. So bottom line, a fellow stipulates an unreasonable condition. Quantity Rabbanan must be kept. Quantity Rabbidim and Tema. Well, walking across the sea and such unreasonable conditions need not be kept. But if it involves a spiritual issue, Abaye says, well, uh, it's all the same thing. Rabbi says, no. If it's something that's within her reach, despite the fact that it involves an Isser, that Tanai is valid. Asks the Gemara. You know, according to Rabbi, even though it involves an Avera, the Tanai is binding. But what about the other issue? Vitepuk lay. Let's be concerned as follows. Let us um, cancel that condition because he is going against the Torah by compelling her to uh, violate an Isser. The Masna, Amashakasa Batero. He's conditioning against the Torah. And we know you can't do that. Machala Masna. Amashakasa Batero. What happens to that condition? It's bottle. It's not a bottle. Omar Vadu Beder Avik. No, no, no. It doesn't apply here. Ki Amrina Masna. When do we apply this formula? Conditioning against the Torah is null and void. This is the classic example. He marries an Isha, which triggers the three basic obligations from the husband to the wife. Supporting her, clothing her, spending physical time with her. So if he tries to cop out, he tries to exempt himself from these obligations upon his marriage. That's called a tnai against the Torah. The hu'akar, because he's uprooting, he's canceling, he's opposing. He's deleting a basic obligation. But here, who's the one committing, violating, being over? She is. She's going to eat the chazer, not him. Therefore, it doesn't call for the tnai of the, the formula of masna kosha Torah. So he made the condition, but she's ultimately violating so he didn't condition against the Torah, she did. So therefore the Tanai is binding. Maskal Ravina, what do you mean? <laughs> Technically speaking, you know, she's doing the violation, but he's forcing her. He's building it into the process. This get only happens if Klum Ka'akra'ihi Ella Lakiyumli Tanai Didei Why is she violating? She wouldn't be doing it if not to fulfill his ridiculous condition. So, ultimately, who's the one bringing about that uprooting of the Torah? Ishtakach the Yuka'akar. Ultimately, he's the one opposing the Torah. So that can't be an excuse. Elam Aravina. Ki amrina masna kot mashagazu b'tayra. Noi batal. When do we say that a Tanai that um, opposes Allah and the Torah becomes null and void? Ki goyin she'eru ksusa v'aynasa. That's only when he's exempting himself from these marriage-related obligations. The Vadik Akka, because there it is certain that he's uprooting those obligations. He's not accepting those upon himself. However, here by the get, as ridiculous as he's presenting himself, as difficult as he's making it for her, but ultimately she's going to want to be the one making decisions. She doesn't have to keep that condition. If she wants to stay with him, she can stay. Who's telling her to eat the chazir? Is it not enough to lo that she doesn't eat? It's an expression. It means to say she can do well without eating. Lo Don't eat. Right? She doesn't have to sit down and eat it and she won't be divorced. So ultimately, she's the one making that choice, making that decision. So he's not considered masna mashakas of Continues the Gemara. So we're going back to the Mishnah where a fellow was Megarish and Isha on condition that uh, you, you don't marry such and such person. Rabbi Leza says it's a get. Echacham say it's not a get. You can't uh, you know, do an incomplete divorce. So bottom line is, if the uh, condition doesn't hold water, what do you do? So the mission says you have to actually take the get back to reset you know, the process and give it back to her without this stipulation. In fact, he'll tell her, go marry anybody you want. And the Mishnah concludes, but if the get 
um, featured that condition written within it. So it was an amendment within the get. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to rewrite the get because it's a, a non-valid agreement. Now, the question is, why does he have to retake the get and re-give it? Let him just, you know, nullify his declaration. After all, he said it, now he'll cancel it. Verbally. Mantana, who's the author of Al-Mishnah that requires him to redo the whole process? Oh, Amar Chizkiah, that's Rav Shimon Lazar here. If you remember, a couple of days ago, we had a, a fellow who gave a get, and he pretended it was just a check. Uh oh, she has to know. She has to be aware. So you have to retake it and re-give it. And this time, do it right. So Rebbe says, no, just uh, fix it up verbally. Just explain to her that it's a get. You don't have to redo the whole process. But Shimon Laza disagrees. You have to redo it physically. You have to re-give it. Rebbe Shimon Laza here. The son of Shimon Laza Eimer, Achi itlano himana, v'yachsev itnano lo, v'yom lo higitach. The only way to fix it up is by taking it back, giving it back to her and saying, this is your get, here as well. He has to take it back and then re-deliver it properly. No, Rabbi Yechon, Omar, Rabbi Yechon disagrees with this. With this um, connection, meaning uh, our Mishnah can follow even the other Shita over there. Rabbi Yechon, Omar, Rabbi, even Rabbi who in that situation told us, you don't have to take it back and re-deliver it. All you need to do is follow up verbally and say, this is your get. But over here it's different. Dilchoin Amar, you're, you're a person, Rashi explains that, this is Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana was one of yours. And Rav Yechon was speaking to the people from Babel. He had come from Babel to Yisrael to learn by Rav Yechonon. And this Lashon Dilchoin Amar, many times in Shas, is a reference to Rav Kahana. So the one of yours, Rav Kahana, actually explained it very well. He explained why our case is way worse and requires a redo, according to all opinions. Omar Shani, here it's different. Remember, we had this Gemara in the beginning of the parak that although, you know, we hold that it's not a proper get because he left somebody out. She's not able to marry anybody. She chooses she can't marry this person or that person, so it's not a proper get, but it is considered a proper divorce. It affects her regarding her future eligibility to marry a Koyin. We learned it from a Pasuk, even if it's just a partial divorce, she's considered a Grusha regarding a Koyin. So, even before he comes back and he fixes it up, she was Koyin of the Get, meaning she received the Get. She internalized the Get, so to speak. It registered on her record with respect to becoming puzzled to marrying a Koyin. So once the Get was registered to a certain extent, The process took effect, and therefore, if you want to redo it, you can't just woke up and say, well, no, I'm canceling. You have to redo the whole thing and do it right. As opposed to the case over there with the uh, husband who uh, pretended it was just a check, there she wasn't zeicha for anything. It's worthless until she's aware of the fact that it's coming to divorce her. So there, nothing yet happened other than the get being physically transferred into her rishos, but the, the process wasn't really, it wasn't really triggered. It hadn't really taken effect with respect to anything. So there, Rebbe holds, just follow up verbally, and it's enough. You don't have to redo it. So let's say this uh, condition that we spoke about, this invalid condition was actually recorded in the, in the get, then there's no uh, option other than rewriting the get. Omrav Kahana, Kosrei B'Seichai Tanam. Yeah. So only if it was actually recorded in the in the get, then the, there's nothing we can do unless we rewrite it. But otherwise, if it was just a verbal stipulation, then uh, he can just uh, you know cancel it. And. Um, So Rashi explains that what happened was he told the, the Adam who was standing there, look, I'm giving this get to the Isha on condition that she does not marry, you know, she's not much of this, this and this person. So the way to fix that up verbally is just um, just um, 
giving it to her and telling her, no, you're mutter to anybody. Right? That's one option. Or even if he gave it to her, so he takes it back, like we said before, he takes it back and he uh, re-delivers it uh, right uh, this time, saying it uh, right, haret and teres lechalado. Okay, so if it's just a verbal uh, condition, that can be undone verbally as well. Well, Pshita says the more obviously, what's Rav Safra coming to add over the Mishnah, which clearly says the same thing? That the issue is only when it was actually recorded in the, in the get. Otherwise, you can just undo it verbally. Perhaps I would say it's not so simple. That's not what the Mishnah meant. Sometimes even verbal conditioning can be problematic and, and cannot be undone simply verbally as well. You have to redo the shtar. Perhaps verbal declarations um, are things that can be undone verbally. That's only when it was declared after the get, the entire get with the ter. Ter contains the personal information, which is the um, primary, uh, you know, part of the get. Right? So, once that's done, once the entire get was already done without any conditions involved, so at that point, a verbal condition which is added at that point, it can be undone verbally. But perhaps a verbal condition that was issued prior to writing the Torah, maybe that's worse, because that's sort of incorporated. It's programmed into the get, even though it was just verbal, but I feel our pen possible, even if it's just verbal, the fact is the get was written with that in mind. So perhaps that cannot be undone verbally. Kamash the Khilish of Safar is no. Anything verbal, irrespective of when, where, and how, can be undone verbally. But Rabbah disagrees. For Rabbah Amar no. Lo Yishonu L'achar HaTorif. Verbal conditions can be undone verbally only if they were stipulated after the Torif, after the get was written without those conditions. Aval Afnei HaTorif, but if this verbal tonight was issued before the Torif was written, Afilo Alpen Ami Pasal, even verbal conditions create trouble and you have to go rewrite the entire get because this get was written with the mindset. With, with that tonight involved. the Rava and Rava follows his shita. The Amalu Rava Lahanu the Kasri Giti Rava instructed those who would write Gitten be very careful. Keep the husband quiet, silence him. Shitzku Shesuki Labal. Shatku Shatuk Shatuki Labal. Keep the husband quiet. Don't let him say anything. Adeksivu Leil Terif to get until you finish writing the get lest he uh, go ahead and uh, stipulate all kinds of conditions, keep him quiet. That's because Rebbe holds even a verbal condition could be trouble if stipulated, if announced, before the get is written. So then the only way to undo it is to rewrite the get. So bottom line is, a written condition is certainly trouble. A verbal condition, well, Rebbe Safar says, it doesn't matter when it was said, you can always undo it. Rabbi says, depends. If it was declared after the get was written, then you can come back and just cancel it. But if it was done before the get was written, and the get was written with that in mind, then it's programmed into the get and cannot be undone so easily. You have to rewrite the get. Okay, so we'll leave the rest for uh, tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem. Let's just recap today's that. So we have the first sugya. A get was given al manas on condition you marry such and such person. Well, according to the uh, last pshat, which is Rav's pshat, she shouldn't go ahead and do that, that's inappropriate, nor should she marry anybody else. For there is a risk that she might not fulfill that condition, in which case uh, she was really never divorced. But the evidence, if she marries Reuven, she can stay on, but if she marries somebody else, she cannot. A tonight which is impractical, impossible to keep, well, uh, according to the Rehidim and Tema, that's how we paskin, you can just ignore that tonight. It's a non-binding condition. What about if it's spiritually unfeasible? It's in our hands to do so, but it's spiritually unfeasible. It's a violation of an ave, of a, of a love, of an iser. Abaye considers it the same as the um, physically impractical tonight, but you ignore it. According to Rava, this one is binding. Now, why isn't it considered masna mashkosa Because after all, it's her prerogative, her choice. If a fellow gave a get with a tenai that uh, invalidates the get, such as you can't marry such and such person, which according to the Chachamim invalidates the, the get. So if the get was given 
With that condition in mind, you have to take it back and re-deliver it. Uh, regarding uh, a tonight that was written in the get, you can't uh, do anything about that unless the get is rewritten. And regarding a verbal tonight, can that be cancelled verbally? Well, according to Rav Safra, always according to Rav, it depends when it was said. All the best to you and Atzlacha Rabbah.